What's your seemingly unsolvable problem? Is it in your finances, your physical or emotional health, your marriage, your money, career or business? I'm here to remind you that no matter what you are up against, God is still on the throne and Jesus still moves on our behalf. All we have to do is get in alignment with his purposes and plans, speak life over our situations no matter how difficult they may seem, and wait patiently on God's provision praying until something happens. With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I'm Coach Tam, and this is the Expect the Impossible podcast. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day that you have allowed us to see that we have never seen before. We thank you for the grace, for this opportunity to grow closer to you. All of us come to you, God, with a surrendered heart. We submit to your will and your plan. And we also come to you, God, with expectation expectation that you are the God of the impossible. God, you know the situations that we are all looking at. You know the tears that have been cried. You know about the sleepless nights and trying to figure things out in our head. But God, we are, we are done with that now. We're bringing our problems, our concerns to you. And God, we're looking for spiritual solutions to practical problems, knowing that you have all the answers. So help us, Lord, to just get in alignment, to get in alignment with your purposes and your plans. Help us to do our part in the process. And, God, we're just going to stand on your word that it's already done. Everything that we are facing In your book, it's already solved. The way out has already been made. And we just thank you and we praise you for being concerned about everything that concerns us. And we invite you into this call this morning as we are getting prepared for the next few days, as we are surrendering our requests to you and standing authoritatively on your word. Help us to prepare to join you where you are working. Lead us through this call. Speak to us as a collective group, God, but also speak to us individually in a way that only you can. These things we ask and receive in Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Breakthrough 2020, Expect the Impossible. I'm Coach Tam, and I am honored to be your host this morning as we start to get ready. Impossible. What is your relationship with this word? Does it resonate with you as you think about your seemingly unsolvable problem? You know, I am a fan of words. So 
when we look at the dictionary and look at how impossible is defined, it's defined as something that is incapable of being done, attained, or fulfilled. It's something that's difficult. <laughs> so what is your impossible situation? What are you looking at today that seems impossible? Is it such severe stress, anxiety, and depression that it feels like your mindset is spinning out of control? Or is it that disease or maybe even untimely death that has been declared over you or a family member by a doctor? Or maybe they're like me and some of my clients where you've tried and failed so many times to eat healthier and exercise consistently to get your high blood pressure, diabetes, or cholesterol on track. And it seems like the more that you try, the more you keep finding yourself straying in the wrong direction. Or maybe it's a marriage in which you and your spouse hardly speak to each other. A financial situation so dire that you can't see your way out. Maybe you're here because you feel disconnected from God. And for the first time, you're really struggling to not just find the time, but if we're honest, to find the will to pray. Or maybe there's a financial hardship that you are up against. In that more month than money situation, and you're not sure how you are going to make ends meet. You find yourself robbing Peter to pay Paul. Or, or maybe you are in a job that you just rather not be in. <laughs> I've been there before. A, a job where you feel like your talents are not fully being utilized, and you just believe that God has more for you. Or maybe you have a dream to start your own business to be able to do your own thing and be your own boss. But you're struggling to see how you get from where you are now to where you want to be. And there might just be someone who's already started the business and 2020 certainly hasn't gone as you'd planned. And now you're trying to figure out how, in the midst of all that's going on in the world, how do I move forward? The categories of impossibilities could go on and on. <laughs> I could probably talk for hours about all the seemingly impossible situations. And though the details of each one is different, the sentiment is the same. Your eyes, your feelings, and the mental chatter that is going on in your head says, this situation is impossible. But, but not only that, the situation is impossible. I don't see a way through it. It's insurmountable. I don't see a way over it. I don't see how I can climb over this thing. It's incomprehensible. How in the world did I get here this far along? And how did the situation get this bad? And it's intolerable. Lord, please get me out of this situation. And no one, no counselor, no friend or pastor or family member has been able to fix the situation for you. Well, if I describe where you are this morning, I have great, not just good, but great news. You are in the right place because God is still on the throne and Jesus still moves on our behalf. All we have to do is get in alignment with his purposes and plans, speak life over our situation, no matter how difficult they may seem, Wait patiently on God's provision 
Because as we talked about on Friday, when you press and pour, it's already done. If you weren't here, you want to make sure that you check out that replay. So I want you right now where you sit, where you stand, I want you to get ready because breakthrough is on the way. And today is all about getting you prepared for breakthrough. So we have a packed agenda. First of all, our theme for the day, if you're taking notes, our theme for the day is you have the power. Now, certainly it is a partnership with God, but what we're going to talk about today is that there is a part that we have to play in partnering with God to bring about that miracle that we're seeking. So I want to introduce you to something today that I'm going to call the four-step course correct. Whatever is going on in your life right now, we're going to guide you through the process of getting things back on course. That will be our main focus today. But I also want to set the stage so that you will be set up for success over the next few days. So today is prep day. Then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we will have very specific prayer focuses. I want to make sure that you're ready for them and you have all your tools and resources in order. And then Friday is going to be a day of celebration where we'll get back together live on Zoom and celebrate what God has done. But today, today is a day of preparation. We're laying the foundation. We are laying the groundwork. And tomorrow, we're going to officially get started with our prayer plan. So I want to make sure that you have everything that you need and you know exactly what you need to do tomorrow. Then we will take some time to close out in prayer, believing that it's already done. So let's get started. You have the power. That's our theme today. You have the power. Now, hopefully, you've already picked up your Take It by Force ebook that we will be using as our guide in our prayer focus this week. If you don't know where that is, I want you to head on over to Amazon.com, Amazon.com. And then in that search bar, I just want you to enter, take it by force. And when you enter those words, you should see the ebook come right on up. If you have Kindle Unlimited, you'll be able to grab that book absolutely free. If you do not, it's just a small investment of $2.99. Now, I can tell you from personal experience that even if you have to pay the $2.99, $2.99. It's one of the best investments that you will make. One of the best investments you will make. I refer to this Take It By Force guide all the time. And I was introduced to it at the end of 2018 when I was going through a really difficult time in my life. And honestly, I was that person that really struggled to pray. And when I found, or should I say, when I was divinely directed to this book, it was a godsend for me. It, it helped me to get recentered and recalibrated and position myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for what God had for me. And I believe that it will do the same for you. Now, the book does have a structure to it. There's a method to the madness, as we say. And what I want to encourage you to do, if you haven't already, is check out the first five chapters of the book before we start tomorrow. The first five chapters are really designed to help introduce you to this concept that Daniel talks about, the title of the book, Taking It by Force. Now, he does provide quite a bit of background in chapters 1 through 5. So what I'm going to do today is condense that down and make it easy for you to digest. And then that's going to even help you, if you haven't already, to read and understand everything that you're seeing. Or if you had, you may want to read one more time with these new insights. Of course, I'm going to add a little bit of my own take from my personal experience and journey with God that 
I pray will be a blessing to you. So if you haven't already, family, I want to encourage you to grab a pen and a paper and prepare to take some notes. Or if you're that smartphone person or tablet person, grab your, grab your, the note section in your smartphone, pull up that notepad, because prayerfully with God's help, we're going to drop some nuggets today that are going to help you not only over the course of this week, but going forward as you pursue whatever God has for you. So in your notes, I want you to write. You've already written, you have the power. You know what? I want you to personalize that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to personalize that. I want you to scratch to through you have the power. In your notes, I want you to write, I have the power. I have the power. And then beneath that, I want you to write four-step course correct. That's what we're going to walk through, four-step course correct. Now, you may imagine just from the title there that there are going to be four steps that we're going to cover, but the course correct piece is about being able to partner with God to shift things in a new direction. There's a quote, I don't if you know me, you know that I'm, I'm huge, not only on scripture, but also on quotes that impact me. And there's a quote from the late, great Jim Rohn. If you don't know who he is, I encourage you to Google him, Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. He says, you can't change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction. And that's what today is all about. It is about changing directions. Regardless of the situation that you find yourself in right now, I want you to know it is possible for that situation to turn around. But here's the thing. You, I, we have to do some things first in order for things to turn around for us. Remember remember I said this earlier? We are partnering with God to bring about this miracle. So it's not all on God. It's not all on us. It is a partnership. So let's walk through the steps that we need to take as a part of this partnership. So you have, I have the power, four-step course correct, and here's step number one. Find your point. So if you're personalizing that, you're writing, find my point. Now, this is my twist on what Daniel talks about in the book. He talks about having the right thought process, the right thought process. And he talks about being of the mindset of drawing that proverbial line in the sand and saying that enough is enough. And as I've read this many times now, it reminds me of different points that I have been at in my life. Probably the one I'm most known for <laughs> is my point with my weight. Well, my, my book, 265 Point, is the story of how I got to and from 265 pounds. And I had to, in order to lose that weight and keep it off, I had to get to that enough is enough place. So the point in 265 point is it's not a place on a map. It's not a physical location. It's a mindset. It's a point where it's no longer an option to continue on the path that I'm on. I had to get to that point where I said to myself, enough is enough. That's it. Or maybe as you've heard, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Daniel says this, I've got to get to a point where enough is enough. I'm going to get my deliverance, 
It's my time to get my breakthrough. Whatever is standing between me and my open doors must be destroyed. And I must enter into my open doors in Jesus' name. And he goes on to say that you've got to tell yourself, I can't continue like this. And I want to add, (laughs) I will not continue like this. Lord Jesus, I know that you have died for me to have peace of mind and to be healthy and to prosper. So whatever is contrary to your promises in my life must leave my life, and they must go now. So, family, the first step, if you will, to being able to turn things around in your life is getting to the point that you decide. And I just believe the fact that you are here, you're listening to the sound of my voice means you want something different, but want isn't a decision. I need you to decide. Something I often tell my clients is the turnaround that you're looking for (laughs) often comes down to making a different decision. Because the decisions that I have been making have contributed to where I am today. Yeah, sometimes it's not not all on me, but, but many times the decisions that I have been making have contributed to why I am where I am, even if my decision was to not partner with God to the level that I needed to. It all comes down to making a different decision. You've got to decide that where you are is not where you will always be, that you're done with frustration, (laughs) the frustration of being stuck in a place that you don't want to be. And you know what? I've, I've come to appreciate frustration, though, because Here's what frustration does. I I want you to shift how you think about frustration right now in this moment. Frustration is doing its job. Frustration is doing its job because I believe that God uses frustration to help us to realize that we are not in alignment. Hmm. It, it, It reminds us that we're not really happy where we are. It serves as a catalyst, as an agitator, if you will, because no one really wants to be frustrated. But the question is, what do we do when we're in frustration? Do we try to figure it out ourselves, or do we turn to God? If you find yourself in a space today where you're frustrated with your current situation, I want to challenge you to make a decision a different decision. I want you to decide that today is the day that you draw the line in the sand, that this is the point where you will no longer accept this situation, and here's the key, you are going to stand in agreement with God's word. Can I tell you something? Sometimes we are stuck in situations and putting up with situations not because the way has not been made. But because we are not standing in agreement with God's word. Life and death is in the power of the the tongue. What are we saying about our situation? Are we standing in agreement with God's word or are we standing in agreement with the lies of the enemy that says this situation can't be solved, that there is no way out, that it truly is impossible. So over the next few days, we're going to be standing in agreement with God's word. And that step is going to help move you from where you currently are to where you want to be. But you got to decide, number one, to find your point You've got to decide that that enough 
is enough. So that's step number one. Enough is enough. Get ready for step number two. Step number two. Daniel talks about it. He calls it push. Push. So write that in your notes. Push. And it's actually, actually an acronym. So give me a, a P period, a U, a period, S period, H period. You've heard this one before. Pray until something happens. Right? So you've got PUSH, the acronym, and then I want you to put an equal sign, pray until something happens. You know something that I noticed about myself? And I wonder if you are able to examine your own prayer life in this moment as you hear the sound of my voice. How persistent are you in your prayers? How persistent are you? Now, when I think about that word persistent, it means that I'm not just doing it once or twice or three times. When someone is persistent, (laughs) that persistent person is the one that you look at and think, gosh, they should have given up by now. They still doing that? They still trying? How persistent are you in your prayers? If I'm honest, there have been times in my life where I really, really, really needed something from God. But I wasn't persistent and consistent in my prayers. And this is what push reminds us of. It it reminds us that this is not a one-and-done type of situation. No, no, no. This is not a one-and-done. It is a literal pray until something happens. Pray until I see the manifestation of what I have been praying. So again, I want to ask you to pause in this moment. That thing that you're believing God for this week, how persistent have you been up until now? Could you be accused of being crazy that you prayed about this thing that much? And if your answer is yes, then I want you to maintain that posture as we go through the prayer focus over the next few days. But if you can honestly admit, you know what? I've prayed about it here and there, but I haven't really been persistent in my prayer. And I want you to make a decision that you are going to pray until something happens, that we are going to pray until we see God move. Not if we see God move, but until we see God move in that situation. I declare in Jesus' name that we are going to see a move miraculously over the next five days. And even so, there will be something on your expect the impossible prayer list that will not yet be manifested. Now, I I want you to know that it's already done. God's not scratching his head trying to figure it out. It's, It's already done. The way has already been made, but it just hasn't been manifested yet. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite songs, you're going to be getting a praise party uh, playlist each day over the next five days. You've got one today, so if you haven't seen your email this morning, make sure that you check out that, uh, that praise list. But later in the week, you're going to, and they're all great songs. But one of my favorites, when I'm really going through a tough situation, and it feels like it's been dragging on and dragging on. And you get to that point where you start to feel like you're losing hope. It's a song by Danny Gassi. It says, you just haven't seen it yet. You just haven't seen it yet. Now, this is where it can get confusing because we're in the present time and we're looking at everything that is going on. We're contending with feelings that tell us that this situation is impossible, and we may even have voices, not just in our head, 
but from other people that convince us that we're in over our head and there is no way out. But that song reminds us that just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not coming. (laughs) We have a date with destiny in which everything that God has promised us will be manifested. Our part is to pray until something happens. So if there's something still on your list at the end of the next five days, I don't want that to be something that discourages you. I want it to be something that fuels you. I want you to make a decision today that you will stand in agreement with God's word until it happens. Again, not if it happens, but until it happens. Why? Because God's word is true. God's word is true. He is exactly who he says he is. And he can do exactly what he said he can do. He is not a man that can lie. So we need to develop that unshakable hope. Help us, Holy Spirit, to develop that unshakable hope that we are not moved by what we see or what we feel or the voices that we hear, but that we are able to remain confident in who God is. Sometimes it takes a little while for us to see the fulfillment of what we've been praying for. And if we're not careful, the enemy can use that against us. He can use it to discourage us, to convince us that since it hasn't happened, it's not going to happen. Because here's what I need you to know. Here's what I need you to know. The the enemy is not just on a mission to derail us from getting to heaven because he got kicked out. (laughs) He doesn't want anybody else to go. But that's not his only mission. No, no, no. That's not his only mission. He also wants to ensure that we do not enjoy the fulfillment of God's promises. Nope. He does not want us to enjoy the fulfillment of God's promises because then if he can convince us that God isn't who he says he is, that God has left us alone, that we got to figure something out, on our own, we got to come up with our plan B because God isn't coming through for us. If he can convince us of that, we never get in alignment with God's perfect will and plan. And not only does that keep us from experiencing the fulfillment of God's promises, but I need you to know that you, you have people that are connected to you. So he doesn't just want you to get off track. He wants all the people that you are connected to to get off track. The enemy's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal. (laughs) What have we allowed the enemy to steal from us? See, when somebody steals something, it doesn't belong to them. They have no business having it. They have no business having it. But they have, through illegal means, obtained something that belongs to someone else. Mm -mm. We're no longer allowing that to happen. We're, We're not going to allow the enemy to steal God's promises from us. No, we're going to pray until something happens. So I need you to stand firm in God's word. That's step number two. Pray until it happens. So I've got to find my point. I need to pray until it happens. I need to push. Here's step number three. This is important. It's important. Daniel talks a lot about this in the first couple of chapters of the book. So number three for your notes is stand in my power. We're personalizing this now. Stand in my power. 
Daniel describes this as operating from your position of authority. He calls it authoritative praying. Authoritative praying. And he says that this violent, intense praying is not just any praying. No. With violent prayer, you pray with authority. No, it's, it's, it's not begging. It's not pleading. In this authoritative prayer, you command. Don't miss that. You don't beg. You don't plead. You command. Now, I believe, many of you know, in sharing my story in a way that benefits others. And I will tell you that the first time, back in 2018, when I read this, I said, well, man, wow, how, how often do I really command rather than begging God to do something in my life? How often do I actually speak with power and authority to the situations that are in my life? I want you to consider that. How often do you speak with power and authority to the situations in your life? Well, I realized as I examined my own prayer life that I was often in that posture of, Lord, please. (laughs) Lord, please get me out of this situation. Lord, please make a way. Open a door. And if I'm honest, I wasn't always calm about it. (laughs) Anybody had that ugly prayer, crying session? (laughs) But here's the thing. God isn't moved by our tears. Uh Uh-oh. He sees it. He sees our tears. And he empathizes with our situation because we have a high priest We have a high priest who's been through all that we've been through. Thank God for Jesus. So he can identify with everything that we're feeling. But at the end of the day, what God responds to is prayer. When we speak in alignment with God's word, it's not the tears. It's not the begging and the pleading. It's standing on God's word. But when our back is against the wall, sometimes we lose sight of that. We're just struggling to hold it all together, begging God to do something. And there are times, there are times when we need to use what Daniel refers to as the request method. So the request method says, I need to go to God and ask for guidance. So this is a situation where the will of God is not clearly uh, understood by us, right? We, maybe we can't find a, a scripture that specifically addresses this, right? Or we do see scriptures that address it, but we're not sure about the timing of this thing. Is this the specific opportunity, God, that you want me to pursue? I know that you've called me to entrepreneurship, but is this the opportunity that you want me to pursue? In those instances where we want to make sure that we go in a direction that aligns with the will of God, then the request method is absolutely positively necessary and appropriate. But what about those situations where the will of God is clearly represented in Scripture? If I know what Scripture says and I believe that the Bible is infallible, then I can stand in confidence and authority on the word. So when we say stand in your power, and in your notes you have stand in my power, what we mean is Stand in your power as a child of the king. Know what the word says. That's important. 
Another reason the enemy tries to keep us out of the word so we don't know what the word says. We don't know what the promises of God are. So we've got to know what the word says. And then number two, we've got to use it as a weapon against the enemy. We've got to use it as a weapon against the enemy. We can't just stand idly by. We've got to use it as a weapon. Daniel says that we've got to master this concept of authoritative praying. We've got to master this concept. And he gives us an example. So if you have your Bible or your Bible app, use Bible Gateway or the Bible app, I want you to head on over. I'll give you a little bit of time to get over there. I want you to head on over to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. We're getting ready for breakthrough. We are expecting the impossible. And we're going to take a look at a few impossible situations today. Mark chapter 10. And when you get there, I want you to go to verse 46. Now, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, but feel free to read from whatever version works for you. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 52, and it reads, Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man, cheer up. They said, come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. Verse 52. And Jesus said to him, go, for your faith has healed you. Go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Can you just visualize that? Just seconds ago, this man could not see, but all it took was a word, go, for your faith has healed you. Let me park here for a second. Notice, go. <laughs> He's expecting you to move. He's expecting you to do something. Go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see, and he made a good decision. He decided to follow Jesus down the road. But I don't want you to miss here. Remember, we're, talk about, we're talking about in this section, in step number three, that we need to stand in our power and use the word as a weapon. Notice that this man had to change his approach. He had to change his approach. The first way that he tried to come at Jesus wasn't working for him. He, he was trying to use that beg and plead kind of method. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Hmm. He had to change his approach. <laughs> the first time, Jesus didn't stop. <laughs> but then I will give him this. He was persistent. People told him to shut up. He said, no, I'm gonna I need something from God. And, and sometimes we're like that, right? We know we need something from God. So no, I'm not going to shut up about it. I'm going to ask God for what I need. Listen, how we ask is also important. Yeah, he, and, and notice that he had to he had to get through the multitude. He had to. Uh, we talked about this on Friday. He had to press. 
he had the press to get in here to be able to talk to Jesus. The multitude had created a distance between him and the Savior, and he had to do something to get through. Hmm. He had to press through that gap to ensure that the multitude didn't stop him from receiving what he needed. Hmm. But then when he did get to the point that he was right there with Jesus, Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? A man said, my rabbi, I want to see. He spoke now in verse 51 with power and authority. And what do you want? It? That is what I want you to do for me. And Jesus honored his request. He said, go for your faith has healed you. Family, we've got to stand in our power. We've got to operate from a position of authority. This week, we are going to command according to God's will. We're going to stand in our power. Number four. Number four. Last one. This one probably isn't going to be a surprise. It's the name of the prayer circle. And it's a theme that God gave me a few years ago. And it just keeps coming back. Number four, expect the impossible. Expect the impossible. Write that down. Expect the impossible. Now, expect the impossible is really a mindset thing. It's a mindset thing. Something that we talk about often at 265. That, The change that I want to see often comes down, as I said earlier, to making a different decision. But making that different decision requires a change of mind. (laughs) It requires a change of mind. If you were to look under the, if you pay close attention, if you look under the 265 logo, it has three statements. Change your mind. Change your body. Change your life. That order family is intentional. You've got to change your mind first. Huh. As a matter of fact, let's do this. Let's do this. Before we get into and before we get into expect the impossible, I want you to go with me to Romans. Romans. Romans chapter twelve. Verse two. Romans chapter twelve. Oh, my Bible app, it it tried to act up on me. Let me try again. Romans chapter 12. Probably operating error. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Right. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Now, this time, I'm going to read from the New International Version. New International Version. Romans 12 and 2. Here it reads, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. One more time. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What is the key? Transforming our mind. Here in the New International Version, it says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it's giving here in Romans 12, so it's giving us the formula. If something in our lives is not lining up, there is a need for a renewing of the mind. Now, one of the things that stood out to me about the scripture a few years ago is the intentionality of God's words. Notice 
that I am going to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Now, I'm not, I'm not super great at English. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not super great at English. Thank God for spell check and the thesaurus and all of those good things. But I do know that renewing is different from renewal. It's also different from renewed, which would indicate past tense. No, this scripture says renewing, I-N-G. And what I know about words that end in I-N-G is that that signals a continuous process. So that means that I have to continuously work on my mindset. I would argue that in situations like this, a seemingly impossible situation, it becomes even more important that we manage our mindset. That even though things look bad, and sometimes really, really bad, that God can still turn that situation around. It's a mindset thing. These are the situations where no matter how much we think about it, no matter how late at night we stay up trying to work different scenarios, no matter how much we worthy, we can't seem to fathom a solution to the problem. It, it's not even something that we can map, wrap our minds around. But even in those situations, yes, like the one that you're looking at right now, the one that looks bad, impassable, insurmountable, incomprehensible, and intolerable, in that situation, I need you to expect the impossible. <laughs> that seemingly impossible thing in your life, inside of it is an incredible opportunity for Jesus to move in your life. Yeah. Within that crazy situation is an incredible opportunity for Jesus to, to advocate on your behalf and make the impossible possible. Yeah. Through Jesus, the impossible is made possible. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. And I'm, I'm just going to summarize these, but you definitely want to write them in your notes so that you can look at them later today in your quiet time. The book of John records seven miracles that show Jesus' astonishing power over the things in life that overwhelm us. The book of John records seven miracles that show Jesus' power over things that are too much for us but are not too much for God. John 2, John chapter 2, at a wedding in Cana, when the wine ran out, maybe you remember this one, Jesus told the servants to fill six stone pots with water and take a cup full to the head waiter. And, and when they got there, the waiter tasted it and found that Jesus had not only turned the water into wine, something that is incomprehensible for us, but the best wine. That's John chapter 2. In John chapter 4, a royal official came to Cana to ask Jesus to heal his dying son in Capernaum, about 20 miles away. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You know, Charlotte is a pretty good, big city, so 20 miles away, uh, that's a good little distance. <laughs> but without moving, Jesus told him, go back home. Your son will live. What? Jesus, you're not going to come with me? I, I know 20 miles might, might be a lot. Like it's clean, clean across the other side of Charlotte, going from North Charlotte to South Charlotte or wherever you are, the north side to the south side or the east side to the west side. I know you're busy. But Jesus, can you just, can you just go back with me? I really need you to heal my dying son. Jesus said, no, I, I don't need to, 
physically be there to do that work. I know you think it has to look this way, but it doesn't. I don't need to physically be there. Just go back home and stand on what I'm saying to you, and your son will live. That boy was healed from a distance. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. By the pool of Bethesda, Jesus saw the man who had been disabled for 38 years. The Lord commanded him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. It didn't matter that this man had been shackled for four decades, almost four decades. So it doesn't matter how long you've been looking at this situation. It didn't matter. All it took was one word from Jesus. Well, a few words, right? (laughs) But the combined statement from Jesus, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. And that man walked. Hmm. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Another a pretty well-known miracle. Jesus fed a crowd of over 5,000 people with five small loaves and two sardine-sized fish. Now, I, I need you to get that because when we read the scripture, we see two fish, and even though two is still really small, you could be thinking much bigger, but I, no, sardine-sized fish. John chapter 6. How could so little feed so many. No matter how you do it, the math doesn't add up. How am I going to take two sardine-sized fish and five small loaves and feed 5,000 people? Can you imagine being the disciples? Like, you're crazy, Jesus. This isn't going to work. Hmm. But the lack of resources never limited Jesus' ability. No. It never stopped him, and it it won't stop him in your situation either. He's still moving on your behalf. Also, in John chapter 6, when a strong wind stirred up the sea and the terrified disciples strained on the oars to make it to shore, Jesus walked on the water. It's not easy to, to think, what in the world? Jesus walking on water? That's not possible. But he did it. And not only did he walk on water, but he immediately calmed the storm. Yeah. All it takes is Jesus moving in your life, and the storm can be calmed. John chapter 9. John chapter 9 for your notes. In Jerusalem, Jesus noticed a man, blind, since birth. (laughs) And at his word. Light is brought to the man's eyes. We talked about this. John chapter 11, when Lazarus died, his sisters were devastated. They had lost their brother. And even Jesus struggled in that moment because he loved Lazarus. And he just, he wasn't told to go at that time. Because God needed to be glorified in the situation of Lazarus dying. So Jesus was able to transform their impossibility into the perfect opportunity to glorify God by bringing Lazarus back to life. Family, sometimes you want him to come now and do it now and to fix it this way because the situation seems so intolerable. But what if God wants to do something even greater? even greater than what you ever anticipated. And in the process, God's name is glorified. Family, I'm so thankful for these scriptures because they remind us, they remind us that he has done it before. And if he's done it before, he can do it again. Even when the situation looks bad, (laughs) Even when the situation looks impossible, he can do it again. As that song says, 
The impossible is God's chance to work a miracle. He's done it for them. And think about it. He's done it for you in the past too. He can do it again. But here's what we need to know. Although God is the one doing the heavy lifting, we have to play a role in our rescue. I want you to write in your notes. I must play a role in my rescue. It's not all on God and it's not all on us. It's a partnership. Right? And our part of that is faithfully executing what we're going to be learning in the next few days. Right? In each of these miraculous situations, there was still a part that the person had to play to cooperate with God's plan. All right? We've got to cooperate with God's perfect plan. And when we do, it's just a matter of time. We can believe it and receive it because it's already done. So now you have your four steps. Got your footsteps. I gotta, I gotta find my point. I gotta make a different decision. I've got to pray until something happens. Not if it happens, but until God's gonna come through for me. Jesus is still moving in my life, but I need to be persistent and consistent in my prayers. I need to stand in my power. When I know what the Word of God says, I need to speak authoritatively over the situation. I don't need to beg. I need to speak life to that situation and reverse the proclamation of death. Speak life. And then last but not least, I need to be in a posture of expectation. I cannot get caught up in what I see, what I feel, or what I hear. I must continue to expect the impossible because he's done it before and he can do it again. You're at the point right now. You're at the point of no return. We are only moving forward, only moving forward. We're no longer staying in these situations. We've made up our mind. We're moving forward. We're going to pray until it happens, and when it happens, we are going to celebrate. We are going to stand in our power as children of the king. We are going to expect the impossible. Our word of the day is Matthew nineteen twenty six. It reminds us that things that seem impossible with man are possible with God. But you're writing your notes. It is possible. I know it doesn't look like it. It doesn't feel like it. But it is With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Well, family, you have your four-step course correct. Now it's time for me to walk you through the steps before we go to get you ready for the next few days. So hopefully you have your Take It By Force ebook. If you don't, I want you to pick that up today. And you have your breakthrough guide that walks you through what's going to happen this week and what our focus will be. You will need both of those tools this week. Make sure you check your emails. And by the way, if you're having trouble seeing some of the emails, that probably means that they are in spam or junk. Those filters sometimes will snag our emails and make them hard for you to see them. So go ahead and mark it as important or mark it as not spam in your email to make sure that you don't miss a thing. You also want to make a decision to carve out time to participate, right? So you want to carve out time to join our call. So tomorrow night, we'll be back right on the same number at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Carve out some time to join the call if you can't catch the replay. And you also want to carve out time to pray the prayers that are in the Take It By Force Guide, right? Because it is a partnership that we are in with God. We've got to do our part. We've got to make sure that we're following those four steps. So even if sometimes it's a a challenge to find the time to pray, 
I want you to make a commitment that you will carve out the time to pray this week. I also want you to decide where you will pray. Now, uh, you can pray anywhere. There is no, I don't believe, that there is a, a magical place that you need to be to pray. But it can help to have a designated place to pray, right? A place that, where you are sure that you are not going to be interrupted, right? You're not going to be interrupted where you can find a quiet place that you can count on having access to each day. I want to encourage you to do that, right? And then I want to encourage you to fast starting tomorrow and through Thursday. Here's the deal. It doesn't mean that you don't eat at all. I mean, it can. But fasting can be as simple as choosing to skip dinner, only eating during certain hours, or maybe eliminating a certain food or drink. What you fast is not so important. It's more about the act of sacrifice, right? So I want you to encourage you to fast something for days four, five, six, and seven. And then I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, to read chapters one through five so that you can really grasp this concept of authoritative prayer that we've been talking about. And then make sure that you are watching out for the daily emails to keep you on track. We are here to keep you focused on your prayer plan. So make sure you add this email address to your safe list so that all of our emails make it to your inbox and not your spam or junk or promotions folder. So family, we are going to start tomorrow. Don't worry. We will outline everything for you in your email so that you'll know exactly what to do. Now, speaking of that email, I also want to encourage you to dedicate some time to praise and worship before your prayer time, before your prayer time. So we're going to give you a couple of songs each day that you can use to set the atmosphere um, of praise and worship. Confess anything that you know may be standing in the way of receiving your breakthrough. And then I want you to go into prayer using the instructions in the guide and believe that your prayers are working. I can't wait to get started. can't wait to meet you back here tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern. Are you ready? Are you excited? I want you to uh, keep us informed of how things are going for you um, in the Facebook group. So head on over to the Expect the Impossible uh, Facebook group, and let us know how things are going. Keep us informed of how things are going in the Expect the Impossible prayer group. We want to know how we can support and pray with you, so keep us posted. Keep us posted. So get ready, get ready, get ready. We are going to have a great time together over the next four days. So now let us, now that you have everything that you need to be set up for success, let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time of preparation. We thank you, God, for the words that you have spoken over our lives, for the reminders that you have given us today. We thank you, God, that we are at our point. We've drawn the line in the sand. Enough is enough. We are ready to move in this a different direction. We thank you, God, for the reminder to pray until something happens. We will be consistent and persistent in our prayers. Thank you, God, for the reminder to stand in our power. Remembering that we are children of the King, that we have the power to speak life over our circumstances. So help us, God, to do just that, to stand in agreement with your word. And, Lord, help us to expect the impossible. Situations look overwhelming. They look like they're too much and we'll never make it and never figure it out. And the truth is we can't figure it out because we are over our heads. But when we partner with you, the impossible becomes possible. So, Lord, 
help us to continue to believe in spite of conflicting evidence, in spite of the feelings that we have, the nervousness and the anxiousness and the anxiety and the stress that we feel. Help us to, to expect. Help us to have that faith of a mustard, size of a mustard seed that you talked about in your word because you can work with even that. Help us to ignore the voices in our head and some from other people that tell us that it's too late, it's too much, and it's too far gone. We just stand in your word, God, thanking you and praising you that you are the God of the impossible and that Jesus still moves on our behalf. So keep us encouraged, God, as we go through this journey. The enemy isn't happy, but we put him in his place. We bind him right now in the name of Jesus. Your plan, your will will prevail. And we just thank you, God, for the breakthroughs that are going to incur um, in mindset, even in the way that we think over the course of these next few days. Help our lives to be changed to the point that your name is glorified and that others ask, what must I do to know this God that you serve? Watch over and protect us. Keep us safe until we come together again on tomorrow. These things we ask and receive in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Coach Sam, and it's my honor to be your host for Breakthrough 2020. Stay close to your emails so that you can stay on track with us as we go to God together. Have an amazing Sunday, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.